Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 film Vicious Fun. It's a Shutter original film and it's coming to Shutter on Tuesday, June 29th. So because I'm releasing this video ahead of time and it's a new film, there are no spoilers in this. So maybe just a little thematic stuff, but there isn't a whole lot to that. But anyway, this film is what it says. Do not miss this one. It is called Vicious Fun. It is Vicious Fun. It's just a good time film. Uh, I would recommend you not miss it. There are a lot of films that come to Shutter, originals, exclusives, and everything, and there are a lot that kind of hit in the middle, uh, in my opinion. Some that are on the bad side, some that are on the great side. But this is one of the ones that's closer to the great side. I wouldn't say it is great, but it's closer to the great side. And I would say it is a, a not-to-be-missed film, honestly. So check it out. Directed by Cody Callahan, who did films such as Antisocial, Antisocial 2, Let Her Out, and The Oak Room, which I have not seen any of, but after seeing this now, I want to. Written by James Villanueva, who, this is their first feature film script. Uh, really good job for a first feature film script. Nice work. Now, David Koechner shows up in this film, just so people know. I don't. If you're familiar with David Koechner, you know who he is, uh, always doing comedic performances. He's basically the type of character you would assume to be in this film. Um, he's that character in every single film he's in. So that's a joy. I love David Koechner. The other person I really wanted to point out, Julian Richings is in this. He was in, he was one of the main characters in the film Anything for Jackson, which I think was also a Shudder original. It was either original or exclusive, I don't know. But he got a lot of attention in that film, and so I was very hyped up to see that he was in this film. And while I really liked him in Anything for Jackson, I liked him even more in Vicious Fun. Uh, he, he has less of a role in Vicious Fun, but what he did with that role, I love. He, he's... Whenever he was on screen, I was very, very happy. I loved his performance in this film. Uh, and I want to see more Julian Richings. So any, anyone who's a filmmaker who may see, see this, contact Julian Richings. Let's put him in more stuff. He's wonderful. Once again, this film is coming Tuesday, June 29th to Shudder, so check it out. So the synopsis, I don't want to give you too much. Uh, it's kind of a, mainly about, a, it's set in the 80s, first of all. And it's mainly about this kind of, horror nerd who writes for a horror magazine uh so there is kind of a love letter to a little bit of horror media there uh he's kind of hopelessly in love with his roommate who's a female and he is having a hard time with it basically so he goes out follows this guy that she was dating trying to get dirt on him to basically be like he's not a good guy you want to be with me um and then he gets too drunk falls asleep in the bar in like a broom closet basically and wakes up and becomes a part of something. I'm not going to go any further than that because I just believe this just should be experienced. I don't want to give anything away, any of the twists and turns, so just watch the film. Awesome synth music to start with an interesting setup featuring some nice camera work. Now I didn't mention what happens in the very, very beginning of the film because it is is a little bit of a teaser for what's actually going on in it, and I don't want to throw that out here, but it's a very attention-grabbing beginning. Just know that. You will be very pleased. And like I said, the synth music in the beginning, it's so 80s, it's so good. Everything just grabs your attention in the beginning. I was sure what the time... I wasn't sure what the time period was, sorry, uh, until someone actually used a phone booth in the beginning of this film. I was like... What are they going for? I can't tell. Because a lot of these films, you just, you don't know where it's actually set. And then there's that one little indicator. And when someone used a phone booth, I was like, okay, I get it. And now the synth music makes sense. It's not a nostalgia thing. It's a time period thing, which is fine. I'm always down for 80s stuff. Love it. The characters are done, are done a bit over the top. So you just kind of need to accept that. At certain times, some of the characters were a bit too much for me. I didn't like how over the top they were, but other times it felt more fun that way. So it really kind of is a give and take based off whatever the situation is going on in the film. But I think overall it works for the overall tone of the film and for you know keeping the pace moving and being funny because it is comedic as well. Very intentionally comedic and there is a lot of comedy thrown in there. But some of the characters probably will get on your nerves at some point. Some other some more than others, in my opinion. Maybe not, but that was just my experience. But I was still fine with it. 
When you realize what's actually going on, you see there's some great potential for where things could end up going with this film. And obviously, because I'm recommending it, it does go to some great points that it could go to. So definitely worth it. At times, it feels like there's so much dialogue covering one thing that it's almost like they're stalling until the next event shows up. So for that reason, I this film's about an hour and 40 minutes with credits and everything. I think it's an hour and 41 with credits, but it's there are those moments where you definitely feel like it could have been cut down, and a lot of it centers around people talking. And the fact that they seem to talk about one thing at length, and they don't need to because it starts to feel like it's stagnating a little bit, and it's like, okay, you know, we can move on, we get the point here. And a lot of the times that extra dialogue has to do with trying to make more jokes, be more comedic about whatever they're talking about. So it doesn't happen a lot in the film, but when those moments happen, you definitely feel it because it really kind of starts to slow the pace of the film, and it does kind of try your patience a little bit. But overall, there's not that much of that in the film. That's just one of my issues within the film. I have a hard time figuring out if they try to be if they're trying to be too stylish or if it ends up matching the kind of ridiculousness of the film and the overall tone of the film. So I kind of like went back and forth on it and I was just like, are they are they being too fast? Are they trying to be too stylish? Are they trying to do too much directorially and editing wise and cinematography wise? But then I in the end I just settled on, you know what? It works. It works. It works for it. And at times it may seem like things are a little bit too much, but that's the film. Like that that's what they were going for. And it all just comes together in the end and it works. So it's it's quirky for that reason. It's a very quirky film, but it's also a very charming film. And actually, I really want to rewatch this already, which doesn't happen a whole lot with films. There was a point where they needed extra bodies. And the way they solved that didn't feel forced. That's a huge thing. There's so many films, especially horror films, where they're like, we need something to happen, especially in horror. It's like, we need to kill more people in this. But we only have this number of like main characters and in this setting. How do we then get more bodies on the screen? They did it in a smart way on this. And a lot of the times it can end up in films feeling very forced, where it's just like, oh, random person's just walking by, get them, you know, it's, yeah, so they did a good job. Some of the comedy lands and some of it actually feels like they're trying too hard. That is one of the things, I think there's enough comedy in this that people are really going to enjoy the funny aspects of it, but there definitely are those moments where you're like, yeah, they're trying a little too hard with this comedy, or they're beating this to death a little bit too much with the comedy. So, but you know, first feature film for Villanueva, and it's good. It's definitely good, better than I could do, to be honest. And actually, it's funny because I actually came up with a concept similar to this film, uh, 10 plus years ago, uh, that I started a script for and never finished. Um, so it's a little bit similar and yes, Villanueva did a much better job than the little bit that I wrote. I like the practical effects and gore level in this. Uh, they did a good job with that. You can tell like it's low ish budget, but they did a good job with the practical effects and gore and it's properly paced throughout the film and it's satisfying enough. I usually don't like music that's this in-your-face and overbearing in a modern horror film, but it actually works with the tone, with how ridiculous it is, over-the-top, quirky, charming, all that stuff. Solid ending. That's another thing. There's a very solid ending to this film that leaves it open for more, and sign me up is what I'm saying. Sign me up for more. I really hope that this film gets a lot of... Uh, watch time through Shudder, because if it does, then maybe, maybe we can get a Vicious Fun too, and I would be all in for that, because like I said, it's fun, it is so fun, you're not gonna watch this and be like, this is the best piece of cinema, or it's so friggin' amazing, but you're gonna say, it's a good time, well, I'm sure not everyone, but I will, and people like me will say, it is a very good time, and it's great to watch. The soundtrack is so good, especially if you are into 80s music. So I have to give a shout out to Steph Copeland, who was the pr the composer for this. Excellent, amazing, phenomenal work on that score. It feels so 80s, and the music is wonderful. Just wonderful. I love it. 
The directing and cinematography is really good. It looks really good. Like I said, there's stuff that feels like maybe it's being trying to be too stylized, but it goes along with the tone of the film. So they know what they were doing. Overall, really good acting for what the film's supposed to be. That's another thing. And when I say really good acting for what the film is supposed to be, that means there are characters that are over the top. And for that reason, some of the actors play those characters very over the top. So you could end up seeing that as like, oh, this person's not a great actor. But no, I think that's what the character was supposed to be. And when you look at it that way, they did a great job with that. So for the most part, really good acting. Got to give this some big points for being pretty original. That's one of the other things. Uh, it does a lot of paying homage to horror in general, and you see things in it that are just like, oh, this seems like it's from this film, this seems like it's from this film. But it's not like stuff ripped from it. It's more like paying homage to them. So it feels good. It feels like it's definitely by people who are old school horror fans and doing a good job paying homage to that point, but also being fresh and original and not ripping people off for ideas. It's a good time. I like the idea. They did a nice job with it. The film is its title, like I've said, Vicious Fun. There's a component that's making fun of how over-the-top critical online film critics can be. Point taken. Point taken. Doesn't mean I'm going to change anything, but yeah. It's very early on in the film when they kind of make that point. Uh, and you'll see what I mean. It's very overt. It's not kind of like veiled at all. It's It's kind of this... Online film reviewers slash critics are kind of a-holes in a sense, <laughs> or can be, can be. I, I like to think that I'm more in the middle. Like, sometimes I'm mean about films, but I also try and find the good in them. Anyway, Vicious Fun, overall. So, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm not, I was between giving it a four star and a three and a half star rating. Um, I, I, I gotta go three and a half. But know that I was really seriously thinking about four, but I think about a bunch of the other films that I put at the four, and I can't quite get it to the four, so know that I'd give it like a 3.75, but um, definitely know it's a must-see at that rate, and, you know, if you want to, you can call it a four because I was so close to it, but hey. Definitely watch it. Definitely see it. I want to hear what other people have to say about it. So put comments down there. We can do spoilers in the comments. Go ahead. So no spoilers in the comments. Shutter, you did a good job getting this one. Let's make Vicious Fun 2 happen. Let's do it, you guys. Uh, that said, uh, I guess that's all I have to say, basically. Three and a half stars. Really like it. Encourage your friends to watch it, too. Because like I said, if you get enough watch time on this through Shutter, maybe we can get a second one. And when you see this film, you will want a second one, most likely. Because where it can go from there, endless possibilities. Could be its own Shutter franchise, just saying. Maybe a series, maybe a Shutter TV series. That could be wonderful. Just throwing out ideas. Anyway, do me a quick favor. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. If you have, thank you very much. If you haven't, please do that because uh, it really helps mo keep me motivated for what I'm doing here. Also, hit the notification bell button because that way you'll know whenever I'm putting up new videos, whether it's one of these or a more in-depth movie review or an unboxing or any of that jazz. But regardless, I thank you very much for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.